Hello, hello. Ederson Oliveira here. This is the February edition of the TEDx user group meeting. DNN user group, Toronto area DNN user group meeting. Today is February the 7th and it's 6.30 in the afternoon, Eastern time. We have, uh, the good thing is that we don't show the entire crowd so we can wait for people to come in, to sneak in as, as we, we talk. But uh, we have a special presentation today, as usual. I was able to secure a very sought after speaker and he, he will be traveling soon to yet another speaking gig, but we're gonna get there in a second. Let me just get our intros done. So let's see here, the agenda, some acknowledgements, some announcements and, and more of more about news in general, a bit of group time. We're gonna go around and see who's there, who's not there. Then we have the presentation, the main presentation, DNN Key Master, a new way to secure DNN websites with Andrew Hofflin. Yes, he is even one of the uh, one of our sponsors, one of the, you know, he gave a big hand to put things together when we were putting together a TEDx website. And then we have our meeting wrap up. So let's get things going here. So a few acknowledgements. Again, as usual, the same set of sponsors. We have DNN for Less from a hosting standpoint, and then we have some modules provided by Easy DNN Solutions. And Andrew, who will be doing the presentation, is also has also you know gratefully helped us to put together the website with his time and his effort there. So I want to thank you as well and recognize Hoffling Software. I'm gonna be listening to from from the mouth of the guy today okay now announcements well this was about i think it's about two or three weeks old now or even even a little more we have dnn 930 release candidate out and that's release candidate version two it's out and Everybody has been asked to test, to try. There is now a form that you can fill out to submit your feedback once you test the release candidates. There is also a list of things that you can potentially test when you are you know, trying out. And again, even Dave, Dave, you a few months ago, you put together a very nice blog post as well that shows what you should do when you want to test and want to try a new release candidate when you want to test that and be able to report that back. So the NN930 is out, release candidate. It's not ready for prime time yet. I'm not sure when will be the re official release date, but the NN930, one of the, one of the upgrades or the changes or the enhancements is the upgrade of the React library. So that's, that's a big one that will impact whoever may have created uh, Persona Bar extensions. And actually talking about that, let me see here. Yeah, so I'm gonna just flip here to a few brow a few pages that I want to share. So this is the one for the 930 release candidate. And there is a blog post. Oops, not this one. Upgrade. So again, if you're thinking about upgrades, it's not ready for prime time, but if you want to try, if you want to test, if you want to read about the changes that have been done to the Persona Bar, because if you, you know, build modules or if you have done any Persona Bar enhancement or any, any Persona Bar entries there, you may want to check this post from, and let me scroll all the way, and that's Matt, Matt Rutledge. And I always bastardize your, your last name, Matt, sorry about that, but. That's me, that's my accent here speaking, not me. Anyway, you may want to get to know a little bit more of what are the implications in case you have done a Persona Bar, you know, extension in the past and you may have to upgrade your code there. Um, what else? In terms of news, what else do we have? Okay, so 
I'm just gonna go top to bottom here and this is not by all means supposed to be comprehensive but just a bit of a of a, a brush through so we have Dean and Summit happening in how many days you know just about two weeks less than two weeks so Denver Colorado February 19th to the 23rd uh, quite a few people here in this call will be going there, but yeah, same place, third time, and uh, I know that people have a blast there. I'll not be around, but hey, you know, I know, I know how it is. I know the drill. Anything about about Summit, David? Sad pandas, sad pandas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We will miss we will miss you, Addison, but inside, we're looking forward jokes. to it. Inside yeah. Jokes. <laughs> okay, good. So again, if you're if you're going there, have a great time and we'll be talking again in a month and getting to know the news and the inside scoop of what happened there. So Denver, Colorado, Dean and Summit. What else? Okay. So more about news in terms if you want to get to know more of what's going on in the Dean space. I mean, there is a there is a recording of the last virtual user conference run by Andy Triba. And the recording is up and live. So if you want to review that, to be honest, I have not had a chance to look at it yet, nor I have been live there in the in the session, but as I remember Mike mentioning that it was a, a, a review of what happened. That's usually how this goes. Um, and yeah, so if, again, if you want to, if you want to have a look at, at that, Andrew Tib Triba and also some other members of the Dean community providing updates as to what went on in the last, in the last uh, three months, that's the last quarter. Okay. And of course, news, 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 DNA Digest. So you should catch up the publication that Clint Patterson put together every month with yet another summary of what is happening in the space, the different events, some tips, some tricks, some interviews, all kinds of things. So yet another place that you can get the inside scoop of what's going on in the DNA space and last, but not list. I have the, of course, the DNA monthly chats that we put together and uh, Mike as well is there, Scott and Joe Craig. We just, we did that just about a week and a half, two weeks ago. So yeah, if you want to see the dismemberment, you can see the dismemberment there. You can find what's that about, who was dismembered there. And again, this is serious. Anyway, moving on here. So upgrade persona bar, that's fine. Okay, that's about that's about all I have in terms of news at this point. Let's go back here to our agenda and let's salute our members. Let's start with the new ones, the new guys or gals, no guys and the new peeps. So Aaron Lopez. Aaron Lopez is from uh, British Columbia, Victoria. We have exchanged a few emails and. He start, he's starting to put some to, together some articles about the end. He's, he's starting to to be more active in the community. So Aaron, hopefully, let me see if you are here by any chance because you got invited. No, you're not. That's fine. That's fine. I miss you. So you should be here next one. This user group is for everybody. Of course, if there are some Canadian peeps, it's always great to see us them around. So Aaron Lopez is a new member another one here from Brampton Ontario I mean it's not even showing up yet so Calvinder Sin Calvinder welcome from Brampton Ontario just on the other side of the the city of Toronto from me from my location here so welcome to the group as well let's see who is around here I'm just looking at you know go to meeting so we have Andrew Hofflin, of course, DP, which stands for David Poindexter. We have Gary, Gary from Toronto. How are you, Gary? Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Good to, well, good to 
see you because you are not showing you. <laughs> fine. Good to you. hear from you. And then we have Steve. 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 Again, you are always around here. Pleasure to have you back, Steve Kopik. Okay. Let's see here. Well, people are chatting. Hmm. I cannot follow chat and, and, and do this at the same time, you know. I cannot multitask, to be honest with you. Anyway, so, oh, and of course I forgot, I forgot Mike. Mike, why did I skip your name? I don't know why, but Mike Smeltzer as well. Mike, again, just reiterating the congratulations. I mean, I know that the feeling is from everybody, you know, that uh, welcomes your newborn baby. Thank you. I, I was just thinking, actually, because every, everyone that I talked to, like, oh, you talk about your new child and things like that. When, when do I, when, when is it not a new child? You asked earlier, I, you know, when do you stop counting? But when, when, when is it, you know, is it a year? Is it six months? Newborn. Six yeah, I, I think that within the year is still, it's still in that mode, you know? Okay. After, after that, it's, hey, it's, uh, no, it's just Mike. <laughs> it's just Mike. <laughs> Oh my, oh my. Okay, so welcome, Mike, as well. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. And as I mentioned to Andrew, whether it's just myself and Andrew, or we have 100 people, or just two of us, or, it doesn't matter. I'll be always doing this, you know, at, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the clock on, at 6.30. So that's it. New peeps, existing peeps, all peeps, no peeps. Let's see here. Okay, let's... Talk about the, the guy, the DNN key master. Andrew has the key of DNN. Anyway, DNN key master, a new way to secure DNN websites. Actually, I was the one, Andrew, sorry about that. I put that as a subtitle, as a as a subheader, you know. I know that you are not the one, but I said, hey, it, it sounds cool, you know. A new way to secure DNN websites. Okay, let me do an intro, a proper intro about Andrew. Okay, let's see here. This I got from, from DNN Summit's website. So here goes. Andrew Hofflin is the owner and architect of Hofflin Software LLC, providing software consulting services for web, cloud, desktop, and mobile development. He has experienced the enterprise software using C Sharp and .NET, which makes using DNN an easy choice for CMS projects. Andrew has been using DNN since the beginning of 2017. Andrew, let me tell you, you're a baby here, okay? You are a baby, DNN-wise. DNN-wise. I'm still new. Yes, it's still, you see, it goes so, back so to the discussion. How long am I still new for? When, when can I say I'm no longer new? Yes, yes, you see, I can, I can tell you, I, I know. You know how, when, when someone newer than you comes in place. <laughs> Anyway, let me finish here. Let me finish this. Okay. So again, Andrew has been using DNN since the beginning of 2017. And as a community member, and as a new member to the community, he has left an impact with several pull requests for the MVC platform. He received his bachelor's from Rochester Institute of Technology. Andrew, again, great to have you here. Finally, you are around. Well, just I'm just poking, poking the beast, the beast, the beast. The beast. That's my accent. Anyway, Andrew, thank you very much for being here. I'm going to shift to you, and can I share? Can I ask you to be presenter? Uh, yes, you can. Perfect. I'm gonna make you the presenter. Let's see. Let me... And one second. Yeah. Okay, great. I can see. All right. This one needs to go away. Okay. All right. You guys can all see my screen? All good. All right. Well, Addison, thank you for the, uh, the kind words today and the introduction. Uh, again, my name is Andrew Heffling, and I'm owner, architect, developer at Heffling Software. And today, I want to talk to you about the DNN Keymaster, uh, a new way to secure your, your DNN websites. 
So the to get started, before we start talking about the actual uh, extension, I want to talk about security breaches in DNN and in web applications in general. The what's generally mentioned in, in the security community as far as web applications go is it's not a matter of if your application is going to be hacked or breached, it's a matter of when. And the, the puzzle is staying up to date on security best practices, uh, using the latest uh, encryption algorithms to stay one step ahead of them. But the, the inevitable will will happen, you know, depending on how valuable the information your, your website has or, or how valuable the information is on your website. So let's look at the scenario that a hacker gains access to, to your VM or your server where your website's hosted. What are, what are they trying to do once they get on there? Uh, and they're, they're going to go straight to your application code and look for uh, your web config file, your, your app secrets JSON file. Uh, and they're looking for database connection strings. They're looking for encryption keys. Because by the time you realize that there's been a security breach, they only have a limited amount of time before they can get that information. And if you can shut them down before they get that information, then, then you're golden. But in reality, it's going to be too late. And now they have usernames and passwords to your database. They might have if they might have SA access to your, or uh, they might have a full admin access to your database. They might have just access to the particular database your your website's using. And at that point, they can start. Uh, at that point, they can start doing some real damage. Let's say you have some very sensitive information, like credit card information, stored in your DNN website somewhere. Well, if they get access to your database, they might be able to start exploiting that or usernames and passwords. And we want to prevent that. So there's a couple of different cloud technologies out there and non-cloud technologies to secure web applications. I am a very big fan of Azure, and they have something called the Azure Key Vault. It's a, a cloud-enabled a certificate and secret storage mechanism that is basically fancy words for you could put your connection strings in, you could put your Stripe API key, you could put your PayPal API key, you could put anything you want in it and you can pull data down from it very easily and very securely. They uh, create a very nice API, whether you're using a, from a developer's perspective, whether you're using the, you know, the .NET SDK, which lets you write C sharp code against, or if you're using just plain RESTful APIs, or it's, it's very easy to, to communicate with. Uh, Andrew. So, yes. Quick, quick question. And most likely this is not a problem, but I just want to raise the point there so you can, you can maybe unpack that a little bit. What about overhead? Is there any overhead implication with, with doing this kind of thing that you are mentioning is storing somewhere else, the, the, those keys? So the the idea here, and, and uh, thanks for, for the question, and anyone feel free to, to stop me along the way. I like my talks to be a little interactive. Uh, so there is a little bit of overhead there, yes. Yeah. So let's say you have a, uh, some type of policy where you can't have your server communicate offsite at all then you, you really wouldn't be able to use this as is because with using something like the Azure Key Vault, my, uh, my server needs to make a, a call, an API call out to Azure, get my, get my secrets, and then stores that information in memory. So it's not making a call every single transaction or request to your web server. It makes it on the initial one, then it stores it in, the, uh, it stores it in memory for subsequent calls. Uh, Thank you. Answer your question. Yeah, th that that the answers. And and again, it stores. You said it stores in memory. Until what? Until mm -hmm. after? And until maybe a, a site recycle happens and a... yeah, until the site recycle happens. Okay, that's good. And uh, so the re and the the reason why the using something like the Azure Key Vault is really secures our website is given our scenario we were just talking about hacker gains access to our website 
they go to your uh, the root of your your website code and they go open up your web config file or maybe your your uh, your app settings JSON file here in .NET Core and they they take a, they take a closer look and they don't see any secrets anymore because they're not there. That's what that's going to be the power of something like the Azure Key Vault because now they're looking for they, they they go and look for where that stuff should be, but it's that stuff's no longer on your server. It's it's elsewhere stored securely in the cloud. What they can get though is they can get something called a your your app registration credentials, but those are very very easy to renew. So the 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 thing that we're solving here is when your database username and password become compromised and all of your keys be, and all of your other additional secrets become compromised, you need to go through and renew every single one of those. If your app registration becomes uh, compromised, you just need to renew the, the password. And then once the password's renewed, they can't access it anymore. And it also makes it in the other part to this is storing it off site, even if they do have your username and password for your to access the key vault, they need there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of steps they still need to go through to be able to gain access to that information. So by the time you find out that there's been a security breach, you should be you know there's no definitive in this, but you should have enough time to turn access off and, and reissue a new key. So that's the Azure side of it. So I built this uh, this new extension called the DNN Keymaster. It is uh, a persona bar extension for DNN. So it, uh, it's really easy to configure and use in any of the 9.x versions of DNN. You just go in, into the Keymaster setting and are able to, to modify any of the settings that you need for the, for the module to, to work. The, the extension is currently just securing your app settings and database connection strings. I have been reaching out to several members of the community, asking them for, for feedback as this has been put together. And if you know of something that is stored in plain text in a DNN website that you think should be secured, especially stuff in the web config, like encryption keys that, that I might have missed, let me know, create an issue on uh, on our GitHub repository and I'll, we'll, we'll add it in for the uh, the 1.0 release though, it's just app settings and the database connection strings. The, the last piece to this is the Keymaster is using currently the Azure Key Vault, but we built it to be agnostic of the different key storage technologies out there and we have built a uh, something that we're calling the Keymaster Provider Framework, which is, goes a little bit outside of what this talk is, but it is an API that allows anyone to create their own custom implementation for the Keymaster. So if you are an, uh, you know, an Amazon Web Services fan and you don't like using Azure and, and you wanted to use their equivalent of Key, of key Vault, you can create your own implementation and it will work with the key master. So we try to put it together in a way where regardless of the key storage technology, there, there's also non-cloud provider ones that you could still use the key master and it'll still work with it. But right now it only works with, with Azure. All right, so I was gonna do a, a live demo. Did anyone have any questions before I switch over to the DNN website? I, I do. Uh, I'm always curious about how how ideas came about, you know? Are you scratching your itch here? I mean, is that is it was that a project that you were working? How how this came about? I mean, how how did you realize this, you know? So I do I do a lot of work uh, outside the the DNN ecosystem, and it's common practice for securing whether it's a mobile app, website, you name it, to start to use the the key vault. There's providers built into .NET Framework and .NET Core right now to swap out app settings that JSON files uh, and the the secrets in there. So it's it's something that's become a commonplace for securing websites and web apps. And I, I saw that this was, this was a gap in DNN and I had 
uh, a couple a couple conversations with some people in the community and I was looking around and was asking is there is there any way to to secure my web config there's what if someone access what if someone accesses my my VM and they get the connection string what what are people doing and I was told there there are some old modules that uh, are no longer no longer work with DNN that used to encrypt data but nothing nothing really substantial and this this tool is is not for everyone. It's for a very specific part of the DNN ecosystem that needs to lock down their their websites and secure it and add, add an extra level of security to their to their websites. All right. Uh, anything else before we start the demo? No. Okay. Uh, and Addison, I'm going to trust you to keep an eye on the, uh, the chat for me because I'm not good at watching I'll, I'll, that. Actually, I'll do that. All right. So let's go over uh, to the first. Uh, I'm just going to show you the uh, we're, we're over on GitHub. I'm going to just paste the link in the chat for those following along at home. And all right. So I have a DNN website here that I just provisioned for this meeting. And what we're going to do with it is we are going to go to uh, the GitHub pro uh, project and download the latest build. So if you go over there under releases, there's 1.0.0. I've, uh, I've already downloaded this onto my machine, but if you just scroll down here and you get the latest install, this is uh, an extension you can install right into DNN. Here we go. So I'm just going to come over to extensions and install. Should be here it is. So am I reading this right, or is this a commercial uh, extension or an open source extension, Andrew? This is an open source extension. Okay. And knowing my luck during a demo, the install failed for some reason. Let me. Let's take. Oh, because of my, my session timed out. Yep. <laughs> you have know, all the planning in place, but you can't trust the session to remain active. All right, let me just log back in. Uh, no, this is this is not a commercial extension. This is free for anyone. It's it's open source. Uh, I am hoping that I could get interest in community members to participate in it, whether it's citing issues or doing pull requests or helping with documentation. Uh, there we go. All right, so let me just install the extension. And we'll just click through everything. All right. So now that we got the uh, extension installed, once uh, DNN reloads, I will show. We'll uh, okay. So we got the key master there. Reload the page here. And there's a couple things that we're going to need to do outside of DNN before we can have everything turned on. Uh, we need to go into Azure and create Key Vault. We're going to need to go into Azure, create the necessary permissions, and we're going to need to copy over those settings into our DNN site. So now that we got the Key Vault installed, I can come over to the, uh, the settings here, and we have a new item here at the top called Key Master. So if I click that, we will we'll have our key master configuration page. I, uh, I already went ahead. I forgot that I did that. I already went ahead and had um, a configuration file installed on my website. So that's why this is pre-populated. I'm just going to delete these. So because we need to go through the configuration portion. So uh, right now, the key master won't work until we configure the Azure portion. So I'm already logged into my Azure account over here. And this is just an empty resource group that I uh, created for this presentation. So I'm just going to click Add, and we're going to search for the Key Vault. And it's the first one there. 
And we'll just create that resource. And I'm just going to call it the Tudug Kilo. And we'll go to Tudug and create. All right, now that that's being created, we need to create something called an app registration. And the app registration is the best way to think of it is it's a a user in your Azure account that is linked to your your website. So you can turn on certain permissions and turn off certain permissions. Because the key vault is great, but if we gave some if we gave our application full unrestricted access to the key vault, there'd be no way to turn it off in the case of a breach. So that's why we use something called the app registration. I already have a tab open there. The way you get to this screen is you go to Azure Active Directory and then you click App Registrations. So I'm going to create a new registration here. And I'm going to call it the Tudug website. And I will hit register. You don't need to fill out anything else here. And now it brings us to the app registration page. And it's got a couple important uh, things here that we need to copy, start copying over. So there's something called the uh, application ID or client ID. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go over to our uh, key master configuration and we have client ID. So I'm going to put that in there. And the directory ID or tenant ID, we're going to copy that as well. And we're going to put that into the tenant ID field. So the next thing we need to do in our app registration is create our secrets. So just click client and our certificates and secrets and just create a new client secret. You can choose expiration time frames, one year, two year, never. We'll just do one year and hit add. You don't need to fill out the description. And it's going to generate this secret value down here. I'll just click copy and we'll bring that over to our client secret here and paste that in. And we Andrew, have, yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt you for a second. So uh, there's this one year uh, expiration that you just said. Right. That what does that mean for for a website that goes live? Is that in one year, do we have to take care of something there? Yeah. So uh, so when you create a secret password that expires in a year, it's go. Uh, that means and uh, and February seventh. 2020, this secret will no longer be valid and the website would cease to, to work. So if you want to do something more permanent, you would just select never. What is what is the best practice? Is that, uh, you know? Uh, it, it really depends on your, your org. If you want to be in the practice of renewing your, your secret value every year, then do it every year. Here's, here's the thing, uh, and I'll show you this once we finish configuring, this secret value will be stored in plain text on, side our, on our web server. So it's, it's not a bad idea if you wanted to be, if you had, uh, you know, auditing and compliance reasons to renew it every year. Uh, you know, for, for me, I, I don't really renew them unless I have to. Does that uh, you. answer your question? Yep, yeah, it does. Thank you. All right, cool. So uh, we just plugged in our client secret. So if we go and head back over to the Tudo, and we go to the key vault that we just created. So there's key, secrets, certificates. All of our secrets are going to go in this folder here. And right now we have no secrets here. But before we get started, I need to update our access policies. So I mentioned earlier that the app registration is uh, it's like a user, uh, it creates a, almost a virtual user for the application. So we're just going to search for that user and give it access to our key vault. So we called it uh, Tudug website. We'll select. And this is very important, and we got to list it out in the documentation. When you select the permissions, you need to give the uh, the app registration access to get, list, set, and delete. If you do not have one of these set correctly, you uh, you could have problems with turning the key master off, turning it on. It's very important to have those things set. All right, and then once you create that uh, access policy, you just hit save. And, and now everything is set up correctly. 
for the, the Azure side of stuff. And the last bit that we're going to do here is we're just going to take the key vault uh, URL here and we're going to plug it in. All right. And over on the configuration side, we need to give our, our secret name is anything that you want it to be. Uh, so in our case here, I'm just going to call it uh, Tadug. It could be, it could be, it really could be anything. It's just pre, it uh, prefixes your secret name when it puts it into the key vault. So you can identify, let's say you put multiple, uh, the one thing that you can do is you can use the same key vault for many different websites. So it lets, it lets you put in different names or you can, or if you use a scenario where you just have one key vault for one website, it, it just gives you a little bit of flexibility. Uh, uh, so in our case here, I just picked uh, to Doug. So now everything's configured correctly. I can hit the test button and it's going to go and check my configuration. So it gave us a, a green, yes, everything worked here. So let me go and save our configuration. There we go, everything's saved. So I'm going to head over to our website code. And we have a new file in here. It's called uh, secrets.json.resources. So if I open this file up, I already had it opened. So I open this file up again. This has all the secrets that we just entered in. And this, it's just as secure as a web config file. But um, so if someone were to access it, they could get your client ID, your client secret, but you only have one key to renew. Uh, so going back to our web interface here now, uh, we are just about ready to turn on the key master. But before we do, I want to open up our web config. So this is this is the right web config file. So scrolling down a little bit, we have our connection string here. We have a bunch of app settings, and those, some of those app settings got encryption keys for the Telerik controls. And I don't want I don't want anyone to see this stuff anymore. So I'm going to come back to the key master and I'm going to hit the go button. It's going to warn us. When you hit the go button here with the key master, uh, don't press anything else for a little bit because uh, we're making web config changes and it takes a little bit for the, the server to reload. When you make a web config change, the, uh, the app pools end up getting recycled as part of it. So it, you just, uh, the advice that I have to people is just re wait for the page to reload. When it gets to about here, uh, you can you can manually refresh because you're you're updating the web config. All right, so now it's going to tell us that the key master is enabled and running. So how do we know that? If we come over to the Notepad that we just had up this page. This, uh, this happens when, this shows up when uh, you're running on localhost. Again, we're updating the web config while the site is running. So it causes that, it causes that, that type of variable. You can just ignore it because it reloads. So let's reload our web config. And things have changed now. There's, there's no connection string here anymore. There's no app settings anywhere in this file. So if I look for you know, connection strings, Oh, that's commented out. But that's the only item. That, that's the only thing that says connection strings in our web config now. There, there's no app settings either. It's, it's all gone. But the website is still working here. I can still reload the website, and everything, everything's still working. What it's doing is it's getting the the connection strings, the encryption keys, all that stuff is coming straight from Azure now. Once our page reloads, I will show you the next thing here. So now that we got the key master running, and I need to go and update an app settings. Well, there is this other tab here called app settings. If I click on that, these are all of the app settings that were in our web config. And now we can manage them straight from the UI here. So if I needed to uh, take a look at my Telerik uh, hash key here, I can just click view secret. And it's going to show me the entire secret here. I can then go ahead and update, which I'm not going to do because that might cause bad problems. But we'll go and create some new new app settings. So if I come in here and say 
we'll create a variable called tut of hello world. And we'll say hello from Azure and from DNN. And I'll save that. So now we've created a new app settings. This would be the same thing as creating additional app settings in your web config. Uh, you know, some modules might use uh, API keys and such in the, in the web config. And uh, you can just add them right here in other, other modules in your DNN site would be able to start using it immediately. So, so, I'm just, so Andrew, so, yes. so for all other intents and purposes, it's like it's transparent to everybody else that these are these are now stored in the vault, correct? I mean, from the DNN standpoint, from a third-party module standpoint, it's all transparent. Yes. So other modules will not be. I'm gonna say caveat with that because there's something I want to talk about at the end. Uh, but the idea is other modules will not be affected by using the key master. They, as long as they go through the standard protocol of getting app settings through DNN and the uh, following you know, C Sharp and .NET best practices, there will not be a problem uh, retrieving these app settings. The uh, the, the way that we've implemented it is using all the native components for retrieving app settings. We've just swapped it out to retrieve the app settings from the key vault. Perfect, yep. All right, cool. So the next thing I want to show you guys is we head over to our key vault and we head over to secrets. When the page loads, now we have all of our secrets here in the key vault that our website's currently using. And I mentioned earlier that we prefixed it with Tudug so you can easily identify all of your secrets for this website. Again, if you wanted to put multiple websites in the same key vault, it allows you an easy way to identify what's for what secrets are associated with which web with, with which website. So going back to our DNN website. Everything here works as you would expect it to, to work as far as a, a DNA website goes. I can go into content, I can add users, and so forth. Uh, but the next thing I did want to show you is when we turn off the key master, what's going to happen here is the DNN key master is going to download all of your secrets from the key vault and put them back into the web config for you and your connection string. So if I reload over here in our Azure key vault, you'll notice that our list is getting smaller and smaller as it operates on it until there's nothing left. And the website will again reload when we turn it on and off. Uh, it, we don't have the sign anymore at the top of this page. It says the key master is enabled. And if I go back to our web config, it said it's changed for us. And now, if you scroll down to the bottom here, we have our app settings and our connection string back in our web config and our DNN website will work just like the way it did before. So the reason why this uh, toggle on and off feature is important is if you turn it on and you realize it's not compatible with some third party module, you can turn it off very quickly and then file an issue back on the GitHub repository so I know to fix it. Um, all right. Uh, question. Question. Yeah. Uh, actually, two, two here. First mm -hmm. of all, you are using Azure there, but the site does not have to be hosted on Azure, does it? No. So uh, there's a couple things. There. So if you notice, my I'm using a dnndev.me. This is a website running on my local machine here. So the only thing that I have in Azure is the key vault. If you want to use an Azure web app, there's some more advanced features built into the key master uh, that you could leverage. So the client ID, client secret, secret name, directory ID, and key vault URL, instead of storing that in a file on your web server, you can use the Azure app settings and store it in the cloud and that way you it, it secures your website even more because now you don't have a plain text file on your web server that has these credentials but that's that's something that i wasn't planning to to do too much of a dive into for for this presentation andrew uh, i'm gonna play just uh 
a little bit devil's advocate here. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Okay, so you have you have a text file in the you know root folder that has mm -hmm. those credentials. If someone hacks in and get that information, will they be able to read that list of things that we're protecting there or not? So that's a great question. I'm really happy you asked it. So let's say, Addison, you hacked into my server and you're about, you're getting ready to, to try and access my information. When you come over to the root directory, you find a secrets.json file and you think, this is, this is the holy grail. I've hit the jackpot. I got client IDs, I got client secrets. I know exactly where this stuff is. You put one and two together. Oh, this is using the Azure Key Vault. I, I can go and take care of stuff. I can go and steal whatever I want. Well, by the time you are able to start making requests to the Key Vault, I've realized that you've done that. And I can come over and update my access policies and we'll just turn it off. How did you realize that? Well, that's the tough part. How do you how do you ever realize that you've been, that no, you've had a security Yeah, breach? because because again, you're saying it's all, it almost sounded like oh, when you do that, I get a, I get I get warned by something, you know, that uh, I'm just I'm just again just wondering there. Right. So there are different security techniques to, to lock down the key vault. You could uh, create uh, certain firewall rules in Azure to limit uh, IP access. So if you, what you could do then is limit the access of your key vault to just your, your server, no one else. Uh, yep. But at the, you know, at the end of the day, if your secure, if your server has a security breach like that, and you have no way of knowing. Yes, someone could start acts, start uh, uh, attacking your your key vault to download those secrets. But it, by putting it in the key vault and using Key Master, you've made it just one more complicated step for them to start downloading, as opposed to having them in plain text. Okay. And you have more security features because if I've set up a firewall rule in Azure, which I can do over here with the firewalls and the virtual networks. Uh, Regardless of, I mean, these keys could be useless then. So if I set up a firewall rule saying that only my server IP address can can attack it, you know, that's the, the the keys might as well be useless without the without coming from the correct IP address. Hey Andrew, why why not just store that in the database instead of in a JSON file? So that would so that's kind of a chicken and an egg problem because yeah. if you store it in the database. How are we going to get the database connection string from the key vault? Exactly. Yep. He was, uh, he was just trying to catch you, you know, Andrew. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Testing the knowledge there. <laughs> well, originally, I didn't create this as a dot resources file. I created it as a dot JSON file, and I was uh, quickly corrected by a community member that that would be available to anyone that typed in secrets dot JSON and the URL and was told when you make dot resources. <laughs> It's it's secured and they can't access it from the outside. So that was that was a fun thing I learned at developing this. Yeah, at least it's a protected file in IIS, so that's good. Right, right. Cool. Um, any other questions before I continue? I I, I do have one. Yeah. yeah. And Fire whenever one. whenever we are talking about Azure, there's always the question of how much this will cost. You know, I I I believe that this is. I mean, this is a very simple, you know, read and write, and I'm sure that yeah. it's not that expensive. But can you can you tell a little bit about cost wise how how much this? Uh, will yeah. Be? So when you, go and, when you go and create the key vault, it actually tells you how much it's going to cost somewhere. Uh, pricing tiers. That's where it is. So it. It's uh, it's relatively affordable. Um, I don't have an exact uh, number to give you that I know that it costs a couple dollars a month or twenty dollars a month, but I I haven't seen my my key vault stuff spike much more than a couple dollars a month. Okay. Yep. Thank you. 
it's it's, a, it's it's an extremely affordable tool and it's the nice thing about it is i don't want to deal with managing uh encryption algorithms and stuff like that let, let microsoft deal with that they, they got the smart people over there let them deal with all that stuff and they can just store my my secrets and give it to me when i need to all right uh andrew uh a DP has asked some questions here. Should hash values should hash values in fire or encrypt them? Yeah, I, I was actually just making a statement that perhaps you could, should consider just hashing those values in that resources file instead of being plain text. Like right. Yeah. You know, or or encrypt them. Uh, that's uh that's a really good idea that uh I uh I did not think of yet, and it would be relatively easy to create, to use, you know, any standard encryption algorithm to encrypt the data so no one could easily access it. So that would be, uh, I think we should do that for uh, for 2.0. Uh, DP, DP, can you please post that on uh, GitHub, please? You know. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, go, uh, if you go over to the GitHub, there's uh, there's issues, and you can, you can log issues. This. Uh, what is GitHub? Sorry. Well, what, is, what is GitHub? <laughs> I'm just kidding. And two hundred dollars for what is GitHub? I was making a joke. It's not for that funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes, please. I'm I'm really asking the community and anyone out there that uh, that thinks this is a good idea and wants to help make it better. Log issues. I'm I'm still I'm still the young guy here in DNN. I'm still new to the community and. Um, I'm looking for what do you want secured with with the key master? So uh, is there any other questions before I continue the rest of my presentation, Anderson? All good. All good here. Okay, cool. So a couple things about the current state and the the future of, of key master. Uh, the right now we have the the 1.0 release, and as I work towards a, a 2.0 release, my goal is to identify different items in the web config that need to be secured. There's, uh, it's been pointed out to me, different sections of the web config that have encryption keys that should be that should be secured in a tool like the the key master. So I've been going through, combing through, and adding issues on GitHub where I need to. Uh, but I, that's the the next big thing is securing everything in the web config, and then working on other parts of the DNN website as as they get identified. I, I mentioned earlier that uh, there is a provider extensibility uh, built into the key master right now. As far as the module and extension software architecture goes, excuse me. the The goal is. I want any developer that downloads the key master to be able to create their own key master provider for whatever technology they want. We'll have a set of provided key master providers that ship with the module, but it's not going to cover everything. There are open source uh, key storage implementations out there that you can host on your own servers and such. And if you're working for a company that needs to use something like that, you should be able to still use the key master, even though you guys, or uh, even though your organization doesn't want to use the Azure key vault, you should still be able to use this module. And right now we have the building blocks for that in place, but uh, it's, not, uh, it's not ready for prime time yet. And I'm hoping when we get to the 2.0 release, we'll have a better developer uh, guide for implementing your own custom uh, key provider. The other thing that uh, we're working towards is looking at the configuration screen here. If we go back. This is a little cumbersome. You know, we spent a little bit of time going through and configuring our resources in Azure and copying over IDs and such and URLs. And this is not ideal in my opinion is uh, this works for the 1.0 release but the goal is to build a new azure connector that uses the dnn connectors and uh, i'm planning to submit a change to the dnn platform and work with the uh, technology advisory group to make the necessary changes to make 
a connector that uses Azure app registrations as uh, that's not supported currently. And that's something that uh, the, the key master could facilitate getting into the platform. And once we have, and once we get a, a new connector for communicating with Azure, this screen here will be greatly simplified. The only thing you would have to enter at that point is maybe a secret name and the key vault URL. Andrew, mm -hmm. uh, version one is is live. So is it? Because I heard you saying that is not ready for prime time or something like that. But it, so is it? Okay, to be it using is prime time. Oh, it, it so, is. Yeah. So the provider, the custom providers, are not ready for prime time. Got it. So okay. The Keymaster itself is ready for prime time. Uh, so when we get ready to release version two dot oh. The, the plan is to have a developer guide for anyone that wants to use a different key storage technology besides the Azure Key Vault. Right now, Keymaster works with the Azure Key Vault, but we want you to be able to use whichever key storage technology that you want. And, and having a framework that allows you to, to allows any C Sharp developer to go in and write code to implement a very simple and basic API, and then uh, you know, include that DLL in your DNN website or create a module that installs it. And then the key master will have a selection of, oh, do you want to use Azure or do you want to use a different uh, different provider that you wrote? And everything else would still work the same. That feature is, not, is, is, is part that's not ready, that's not yet ready. Uh, but everything else with the key master is ready for production. We are starting to identify some modules that it does that it's not compatible with. And if you do find one, please, please, please log the issue on on GitHub so I can uh, resolve that issue. Uh, are there any any other questions? Not from my side. I mean, it seems. Quite, quite interesting, quite, quite useful, you know. Yeah, if, if um, if a uh, connectivity fails, Andrew, would you just get a standard uh, error like you would if you couldn't connect to the database, or what's uh, what's returned to the user? Uh, if you're gonna get a your IIS error that basically says there's an issue with the server config. Oh, okay. So the I guess I guess the standard error. Cool. Are you going to be talking about about it during uh, the NN Summit? Is it one of your talks? No, no. This was something that uh, we came up with and implemented uh, in about 20 days, I want to say. <laughs> we in your spare time. The idea beginning of January. And then we said, let's, let's get this done. And we, we kind of just threw as much code at it as we could until we got it working. Uh, but no, I'm not. I'm not going to be talking about this at DNN Summit. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe the next year's summit, I'll be able to to talk about this when it's uh, a little bit more robust. But again, this I, I, I'm using this in production for a couple of my websites as as it stands right now for uh, that when it has modules that's compatible with um, one of the the modules that I'll point out. And if you're you're watching the video, if you go over to the GitHub, we've got. Uh, a bug right now for it being incompatible with uh, with too sexy content. Uh, so if you got third party modules that did, that does stuff outside of the the standard DNN way to communicate with the database, you uh, you might run into problems with it. But that's I'm going to have this uh, this bug fixed um, by the end of the month, and we're going to roll out a new build for that. So we'll we'll have that wrapped up. But uh, if you if you do find anything, let me know. I do want to fix it. Awesome, awesome, Andrew. That that's great. That's again awesome. Anything else? Anybody? Anybody? I, I think it's I think it's it's good job, Andrew. Um, to to kind of add Addison's question earlier and and points, you know, this day and age, it, it doesn't matter what we do. Like it, it does, but at the end of the day, anything you can break anything. It's it's IT. Right. Anything can get broken. So. Tools like this are great to help mitigate risk. It's not going to eliminate, but it'll help mitigate. To answer exactly. this point, 
one more step, right? Uh, to David's point, you could, yeah, you can you could hash uh, the file, encrypt everything, one more step. And, uh, you know, if you make uh, you make it hard for people to get to things, chances are they're going to give up or don't have the uh, the skill set to figure it out at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, we need monitoring tools, obviously, too. Um, a lot of small businesses, it's out of reach for, but there are, I know Andrew was starting to mention some there, there are tools out there that, you know, you can monitor to see if files are changed uh, and send alerts to you or, uh, you know, if you're breaking into firewalls and things like that. So, um, well, it will not completely eliminate things. Awesome tool by looks of it to help mitigate risk. Yeah, that's that was the goal of this. There's, you know, it's not a matter of if I'm going to get hacked, it's a matter of when, and it's a matter of do I have content that is a high risk to somebody? If you build, you know, a small website for a church, you probably don't have a lot of risk, but if you're working as a government contractor, on the other hand, that site's got a lot of risk and this would be a great uh, tool to be using on something that has that type of risk because now it locks it down just a little bit more. Yeah. No, that's great. At the end of the day, you know, I, I do consult myself and it's at the end of the day, if you're building something for someone who's paying you and you're not trying to mitigate risk, then you could be liable for some things at the end of the day as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So from a service provider's perspective, you always want to look to, you know, look at the whole ecosystem of what you're delivering and, and where are you liable or how can you, uh, you know, help smooth the situation out for sure. Right, right. Mike, we know a company that should be using that, Mike. Yeah, yeah, I, I probably know a few. <laughs> yeah. uh, Andrew, again, great talk. Great. Any, anything else that you want to add? That you want to uh, to wrap things up? No. Um. You know, maybe. Sure. Yes. Yes. I, I, I've said it a hundred times, and I I'm really pointing everyone back to the GitHub repository, and I'm looking for for feedback from anyone in the DNA community that wants to participate in, you know, finding issues with this, or if you, if you want to submit a pull request and you, you have trouble with it, get a hold of me, shoot me an email or something. And, you know, um, I think, I think this is going to be a great tool for the DNN community. I, I have a biased opinion, but uh, I'd love to get people's feedback on, on using it, on way to improve it. You know, the, uh, the, the 1.0 build was really, let's get this at a point where we can share it with the community and see what people think. If you are going to use this uh, this tool and you come to the, uh, the GitHub repository, scroll down, look at the readme. There is a lot of valuable information on the readme. I got some, some I've ran it on every version of uh, 9.x right now and it installs successfully. We got information on how to, how to contribute, how to build stuff locally. Uh, we even got a, a getting started guide if you want to get this installed onto your your DNN instance. And uh, this getting started guide is the, the text equivalent of this presentation. It goes through how to set up, you know, your Azure app registrations, your secrets, the key vault, installing it into your DNN instance, and adding everything. So this is a, a pretty good document uh, if you. Uh, want to try and get you uh, start using this on your own. Awesome. And correct if I'm wrong, Andrew, but this is the first time that you that you publicly uh, explain or demonstrate the the the, the module or the, the extension. Uh, yes, yes, this is the the first time I've I've talked about it. I've had conversations with several people in the, the community about it. And it's it's been developed in the open, but it's only as open as people can can see it or has visibility to the community. So this is uh, the first time I'm I'm talking publicly about it. Take that, so fry. Take that one, so fry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> exclusive, exclusive, blah 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 blah. Come, blah. come get me, come get me. <laughs> Andrew, again, thanks very much for for being here for demonstrating the new tool again. I'm sure that you're going to start receiving feedback quite a lot. Again, if it's securing things, I mean, people will be, you know, looking at that and, you know, if it's community driven, if it's open source, even, even more so. So again, thank you very much for taking the time for doing this. Okay. 
Yeah, not a problem. This was uh, I'm really happy to, to share it. I'm glad I got some some good feedback in this presentation. Hope uh, hope I wasn't too uh, too boring. No, no, not at all, not at all. And and again, you you really did a, a good job here. Okay, so I'm going to take back control over just to wrap things up. All right. Let's see here. Make me presenter. And okay. Let me share my screen. <clears throat> okay, so again, just to wrap things up, I mean, questions, yeah, questions have been asked. And once again, Andrew, thank you so much for doing this. We have gone through the questions already, so no crickets, but some questions. That's it. That's about it. No reason to keep you, keep holding you guys for longer. Just want to wish everybody that's going to the NN Summit uh, a happy, happy event. I hope that you guys have a lot of fun. In a month, we're going to be talking again. I'm still securing the next guest here, but I guess I'd, let me just mention. Uh, it Who's it going to be? Yeah, it should be. <laughs> well, Exclusive, know, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not sure if I'm going to, if, if I'm going to, you know, release that information yet because somebody else might <laughs> no. it might be it might be hey daniel i'm 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 waiting for that confirmation daniel metler to talk about two sexy content what else what else i mean aren't we you know we don't get enough of two sex content let's have it a little bit more here you know <laughs> guys thank you very much have a great one enjoy the summit bye